Hi, I'm Richard McAllister from Capistrano Volkswagen in San Juan Capistrano in California. And this is the new 2012 all new Passat by Volkswagen. It is the Motor Trend car of the year for 2012, beat out a whole bunch of different contenders. I forget how many, but I, I read the article and they have a whole bunch of different criteria that they judge the car on. We're gonna go over a few of those today. This particular model is the SEL Premium version. This new Passat is built in the all new plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They call it their flagship plant. It is their most modern and most technologically advanced plant. It's also very green. It is a zero landfill plant and they collect all of the rainwater that actually lands on the roof of the building, use that in the restrooms of the plant. They use significant area of skylights, so they only have to use 50% of the power that they normally would use for illumination. It's extremely green and forward thinking. They want this plant to be something that they can use to grow there are rumors about them uh, expanding the plant and using different areas of the grounds around the plant to build new cars, that kind of thing. But this is their first big foray since uh, I believe the late 70s into building cars in the United States. And they're really doing a big, a great job of it. It's not often that a car company will build a new plant and then build a new car all in the same plant. Usually what they'll do is they will use an existing plant to build a new car or they'll build a new plant for an existing car. They decided to go ahead and just kind of do the whole thing, new plant, new car, and just kind of start fresh with the Passat. And it really seems to have paid off quite a bit because of the Car of the Year award. Let's do a walk around, take a look at the outside. The all new Passat has been significantly redesigned. It's much larger than the old Passat. It's longer, wider. It's also styled much more aggressively. The older one was a little more subtle, a little more curvy. This one's a lot wider, a lot sleeker looking. I like to call it understated Teutonic elegance. Uh, many critics have said that it doesn't photograph very well. So, for example, on the sides of the car, here, they call this a character line that goes along the side here. And unless you're really close, you can't really tell the subtle character lines. It actually is extremely elegant. Volkswagen has a tendency to not use sudden changes and trendy styles. They don't want the car to just grab you and then be dated within the next nine months to a year. They really like to have their styles last and be a little more timeless. And I really think they've hit on something with this car. The SEL Premium comes with these really nice 18 inch alloy wheels. They are a split five spoke design. Even the SE model uh, has 17 inch wheels and the S model, the, there's S, SE, and SEL trim levels. The S is the most basic one and it even has 16 inch wheels. The most basic one is steel wheels with a hubcap, a uh, wheel cover on it. The S with appearance is the first one that has the automatic transmission and that's one of the more popular ones. It has 16 inch alloy wheels. Used to be, I remember when I was first getting into cars, the big wheel was 15 inch. Of course, that's considered tiny these days, but uh, Volkswagen has made a significant investment in wheel design. Every car has subtle wheel differences that I really think complement the design of the car. I really like the look of the new Passat from the back. I really like the tail lights. I really like the wide stance. It's an unmistakably German car. It's uh, kind of low, kind of wide. It's a much larger car than the Jetta. 
Some people have said that it looks a lot like the Jetta. I actually, sure it has some similarities, but it's significantly larger and I think significantly different. Again, it's kind of hard to see when you're photographing, but when you're up close and looking at the car, it's unmistakably German luxury sedan. The SEL Premium has what Volkswagen likes to call KESI, stands for Keyless Entry Start Stop System. What that means is, with the key just in your pocket, so I'm not even touching the key, I can lock the car just by touching this little indentation on the door. To unlock the car, I simply touch the inside of the door handle. So, the car's locked. I'm gonna walk around to the back to open the trunk. There's a small switch right underneath here. I just lift that, opens up the trunk. The trunk is huge, 15.9 cubic feet. This particular model has uh, an additional mat kit that Volkswagen makes. It comes with a rubber lined carpeted mat that includes these Velcro chocks. They're Velcro on the bottom, little L-shaped things. There are four of them. That is so that you can keep your cargo from sliding around. You go to Costco, you go to the store, you have a jug of milk, you don't want your, your bag to slide around. You just put those around it, keeps everything right in position. Right here are the levers you pull to put down the back seat. The back seats fold down completely. There's a two-thirds, one-third split. Pull them down, in significantly increase the amount of storage space that you have for the trunk. Another thing that the SEL Premium has, behind the armrest, which most of them have, is a pass-through. This little deal right here opens up so that you can still have long items or access to the trunk with four people in the car. That is also, you can see that there's a keyhole on it so that you can lock that up if you ever get valet parking. The back armrest also has a little bit of storage in it for your back seat passengers, as well as nice big cup holders. Underneath here is your spare tire. This is kind of interesting. This little hook right here is something that Volkswagen likes to do. That hooks on to the edge of the trunk so that if you need to get down underneath to get your spare tire or whatnot out, you're not fighting with this big flap trying to keep it up. All Volkswagens do come with roadside assistance, so hopefully you never need it, but if you do, you just call one number and they come sweep you away on a tow truck and take you to the nearest dealership. We're now in the back seat of the SEL Premium version of the Passat. It is upholstered in real leather and a material called Dynamica. Dynamica is a type of an ultra suede. It's a washable suede, doesn't spot, doesn't get as dirty. It's much breathable, much more breathable than leather, I should say, without having to have it be perforated. The SEL Premium has this fabric. The SEL, because there are actually two different cars, SEL and SEL Premium. So the SE and the SEL have what's called VTEX, which is the textured vinyl leatherette, which is what you find in the whole range of Volkswagen cars. The back seat of the new Passat is significantly larger than last Passat. It's also significantly larger than many of the mid-sized cars in this class. I mean, I'm six foot two and I'm mostly legs. And you can see that with the front seat adjusted for a person of my height, I have more than enough knee room and leg room for myself. In fact, uh, one of the Motor Trends judges remarked that it was like a mini limo in the back. The SEL Premium version of the Passat has remote start. You can start your car from a distance away. This was seen on the mini Darth Vader commercial on the Super Bowl. To do the remote start, you have to 
lock the car and press a certain button on the key for two seconds for a couple of seconds and hold it it starts up the car is running now it will run for 10 minutes up to 10 minutes every time you start it and you can start it remotely up to twice in a row after that they don't want you to keep starting it one of the cool things about that is when you start the car remotely it sets the dual zone climate control to 68 degrees for both sides that's really nice because if, even if it's a hot day or a very cold day it's going to set the car to be very comfortable when you get in the SEL Premium version of the Passat has fog lamps that have a really neat feature. It's called corner illuminating fog lamps. What that means is when you're going slowly and you take kind of a sharp corner, it is going to illuminate the fog lamp of the side of the car that you're turning. That will illuminate the corner of the area that you're going into to show you where you're headed. Let me show you how that works. So here I am pulling into a parking lot or somewhere that I'm unfamiliar with and I turn the wheel and it illuminates the fog lamp to the left. If I turn the wheel the other way, it's going to illuminate the fog lamp to the right. All Volkswagens have one touch down, one touch up windows, not just on the driver's door or just the front doors, but on all four doors press and the, th the whole window goes down all at once, lift and the whole window goes up at once, and it has pinch protection. So any little hands that decide to get in the way while you're rolling up the, the window won't be pinched in there, won't get hurt. Every Passat, even the most basic S stick shift Passat, has a dual zone automatic climate control. The dual zone automatic climate control means you just set, you hit auto, set the temperature that you want the interior of the car to go to for each side, driver side and passenger side. You can also hit sync, which means that when you turn the knob for the driver side, it will adjust the temperature to both sides. But if the person on the passenger side is too cold, too hot, they can adjust their temperature to be up to 15 degrees different from the driver's set. The SEL, SEL Premium, and I believe the SE with sunroof and nav versions also have heated seats on both the driver's and passenger side. You just press once for high, once for medium, once for low, and again for off. Every Passat, even the most basic Passat, has automatic headlamps, so you don't ever even have to touch your headlight switch. You don't have to shut them off. You won't forget about turning them off. It's light sensitive, so the, when it gets dark outside, the headlights automatically come on. When you shut off the car, they automatically go off. Another thing that all of the Passats have is rain-sensing wipers. That's another nice luxury item that uh, a lot of luxury cars have that something in this range especially like the most basic one uh, normally doesn't have you usually have to pay extra for it there's a rain sensor on the windshield which can tell when rain droplets hit it you set the wiper switch up to the position that you would normally use for intermittent wipers and then there is a sensitivity adjustment right here on the stock. So left makes it less sensitive and right makes it more sensitive. You never have to adjust your wipers in a big rainstorm where the rain is beating down harder or it lightens up and normally you have to adjust your wipers up and down. Don't have to do anything. It speeds it up, slows it down, makes it intermittent for you. It's one of those really nice convenience features. The interior of the Passat is well laid out in a very intuitive way, in such a way that you don't have to consult your owner's manual to understand how to adjust anything. It's very easy to get to know, very easy to drive without being confusing while you're driving, because you don't want to be distracted while you're driving, that's for sure. The interior is also designed in a way that is not trendy. They like to keep things that are elegant 
and somewhat simple looking so that you don't get tired of it and it looks dated like a lot of other vehicles. The Passat is available with an optional sunroof. The sunroof can be closed if you don't want all of the sun, of course, but you'll notice on that cover, there are little vents right here. That's nice because sometimes you want to open up the sunroof, get a little of that ventilation, but maybe you don't want all of the bright sunlight. You're gonna still get the ventilation from the sunroof with the cover closed because of those little vents. To pop open the sunroof, you press up on this little switch right here. To close it, you pull down on it. To slide it open, you turn the knob. There are multiple settings for different open amounts. This setting here is called the comfort setting. The comfort setting is the most airflow, the most open, before you start getting the reverberating kind of wub 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 helicoptering noise that you can sometimes get with an open sunroof. You can open the sunroof further by turning and holding the switch, but it is going to become a little bit noisy at speeds. There are a number of little cubby holes, little storage spaces in the new Passat. There's the main glove box, of course. There is a little cubby hole in front of the gear shift. There's a cup holder, well, two cup holders that are covered. There's a large console underneath the armrest. The armrest also slides forward, which is a nice little feature, gives you a little bit more room. And then over on the driver's side, much like the Beetle, there's a driver's side glove box. Inside the console underneath the armrest uh, is quite a big, deep storage area. The other thing that's inside this storage area is a 12 volt outlet, an auxiliary jack for your iPod, and if you have the what's called the MDI or music device interface option, there's a cable in there which plugs directly into your iPod. The new Passat has a lot of technologically advanced features. Of course, it has integrated Bluetooth, and many of them have navigation, iPod integration, all that sort of thing. I'm going to show you how to sync up your Bluetooth to the Passat. First, you turn on the car. And within the first five minutes of it being on, I go into my settings, general Bluetooth, and wait for my phone to find the car. There it is. So I choose that and choose the pin zero, oops, zero, 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 zero. It's now connected. I can put my phone away. And now, here in the dashboard, it actually is telling me it has found a new cell phone and it wants to create a user profile. So I'm going to say OK. And you can actually name your cell phone here if you want. I'm just going to choose the, the name that uh, my phone has in it, which is McPhone. OK, now that we have paired our Bluetooth, I can make telephone calls very easily with uh, the voice activation tag. I can also make phone calls by using the central display between my speedometer and my odometer. There are some buttons on the steering wheel that I can use to go up and down and enter into my phone book and I can scroll through all of my contacts. I can also scroll through all of my contacts on the navigation screen just by pressing this button in the corner and scrolling through the contacts I can actually click and drag I can tap individually I can make a phone call just by pressing that contact Passats that have the music device interface or MDI come with this little cable you just plug it right into your iPod your iPod connects up and then as soon as it's connected up, it comes up on your screen. I just hit media here. And it starts playing the last song that you were playing. You can also go in and make selections. Press selection and go into your songs menu. You can go up a level and look at your songs, artists, albums, 
playlists, everything that you have on your iPod. That way you're not having to reach down, mess with your iPod, taking your eyes off the road. You can just look down at your screen, press what you want, rather than having to take your eyes off the road and mess with your iPod. There are also controls right here on the steering wheel for your iPod, for the stereo, for your Bluetooth. Those items on the steering wheel are to keep you uh, focused on the road while you're trying to change songs, make phone calls, that kind of stuff. It's a, an aid in keeping distracted driving to a minimum. Volkswagen has partnered with Fender amplifiers and guitars to make the Fender sound system. The Fender sound system in this car, it, this is the SEL Premium and it's also available in the SEL, has eight speakers and a subwoofer and an amplifier. And the whole idea that Fender wanted to bring across was the feeling of being at a concert and having the music come from a stage in front of you. So they kind of centered the music a little more toward the front of the car. It's a really, really nice sound system. Uh, being in a car with a Fender audio system, you should really try it out because it's a different feeling than any other sound system out there. This car has the RNS 510 navigation system. It's a little bit more advanced navigation system than the RNS 315, which is available in like the Beetle and the Jetta and some of the Passats. This one has um, a hard drive in it that you can actually load music onto by putting in an SD card here into this little slot on the face of the stereo. It also, of course, has a CD slot here. This one you can actually play DVDs on also. Of course, the second you start moving, the video shuts off, but you can still listen to it. Going into the navigation system, it's really easy to use. You can just press right here on the little navigation button, and let's say I wanted to go to a new destination, press the little button right there. You can enter the address, you can go to a, an intersection or the city center, I always like just hitting the places button and going to categories. Let's say I wanted to find the nearest place to fuel up. This car happens to be the TDI, the diesel, so I'm going to choose diesel station and I'm going to start my search. It's going to come up and find a whole lot of places already in the, in the closest 22 miles. I'm going to choose the first one here, this little Chevron station. Right here, I could press the little button that calls that, uh, that station if I wanted to, and that would use the Bluetooth of the car to make that telephone call. Or I can just hit OK and start the, the routing. routes are being calculated. Now, this Please one select a route. has three different routes available. I've turned on the option to suggest three alternative routes. You can see one of them is the economical route, one of them is the fast route, and one of them is the most direct route. So I'm just going to choose the economical route. The destination route. is in the displayed direction. These three routes just happen to be the same route because it's very close by. So she has already come up with the route and it's showing me how to continue. Another very cool thing about the Passat with the navigation system is in the central display between your speedometer and the tachometer, there's a little screen that is your, kind of your information system. It will bring up your next turn, how far away you are from your next turn, all of the significant information that you need for navigating right there in the center so you don't have to always be taking your eyes off the road down to your navigation system. You can actually just glance down into your dashboard to see what your next turn is. The Passat is a IIHS or Insurance Institute for Highway Safety top safety pick. It's one of the safest cars on the road. It has you know, front, side, rear, rollover, front offset, collision, all of those got their best marks. So not only does it have a crash optimized front end, you know, with the safety zones and everything like that, but it also has something called electronic stability control. Uh, all cars this year, I believe, should have electronic stability control. Volkswagen's been doing it for 
oh, I think since about 2004. What that means is, no matter how hard you try, you try sliding out of control, you make a quick turn like you're avoiding something in the road, no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be able to break away the back tires, you're not going to be able to slide, potentially roll, anything like that, because the car knows which way you want to turn. It has sensors knowing what pedals you're pressing and which way you're turning the wheel. And it also has sensors that know which way the car is traveling. And if those are not in, they're not correct, the, the, they're not in confluence with each other, it's going to apply the brakes to one tire more than another to keep you in control, keep you from sliding. Also, one of the significant things that has come about in the past few years is that most cars have a tire pressure monitoring system. Of course, this does have a tire pressure monitoring system. But one thing that keeps you out of an accident is the agility of a car. Uh, one of the things that Motor Trend tested in their Car of the Year uh, tests is the agility, the performance of a car. This car performs significantly better on their figure eight course, which is their performance course, than other cars. They they even said that maybe it wasn't as fast as some of the competitors, 0 to 60, but it went around their track faster than the other ones. That just shows that it, it has better cornering abilities, it's got that German suspension, that German handling, that uh, is, that's what German cars are famous for. The Passat is available with a choice of three different engines. We're going to take a look at the engine on this one. This one happens to be the two liter turbo direct injection diesel engine. Pull the little lever right here to pop the hood. Come around here, right here in the center. Lift up the hood. This one is, like says TDI, means turbo direct injection. That's the diesel. Uh, it's a two liter turbocharged diesel. It's interesting, diesels have less horsepower, but a lot more torque. This is actually a really fun car to drive. It's 236 pounds feet of torque, even though it only has 140 horsepower. Underneath the hood here, you'll see that this is the hood, this is the scoop for the air that goes to the diesel, or I'm sorry, to the turbocharger. That's your main air cleaner. That's where the, the air filter goes. Battery is up out of the way, out of the way of the crumple zone. That's kind of a significant thing. Uh, all Volkswagens have what's called the intelligent crash response system. Intelligent crash response system means that if you are in an accident where an airbag goes off, the car instantly shuts off the fuel supply, unlocks the doors, turns on the interior lights and turns on the emergency flashers. That way you're seen, you can see, and uh, the fuel's off so that, you know, very low risk of, of, you know, fires, that kind of thing. And it does that by having the battery up out of the way so that it's not going to get crushed, so it's going to com continue providing power to the car even after a significant impact. The rest of the engine is fairly clean, very normally laid out. You've got your oil dipstick right down here, your oil filler right over here. The uh, coolant system is up over here. It uses coolant that's called G12. It's not the normal antifreeze, the normal yellow stuff that you usually see in uh, you know antifreeze bottles. It's a, uh, a less corrosive synthetic coolant that will help your cooling system last over twice as long. And then over here is where you fill up your washer fluid. The other engines that are available in the Passat, the most popular one is the five cylinder, 2.5 liter engine, which you can also get in the Jetta and the Beetle. The 2.5 liter five cylinder has 170 horsepower and 177 pounds feet of torque. It's actually very peppy. It gets, it's got more power than a little four cylinder. It's a little smoother than a four cylinder, but it doesn't uh, drink as much fuel as a six cylinder. So for instance, this in the regular five cylinder, even though it's a big full size car, still gets 31 miles per gallon on the highway. This diesel, gets 42 miles per gallon on the highway. 
It's also available in a V6 for the people that really want that really fast power. It's a 3.6 liter V6. One of the categories that the Motor Trend Car of the Year judges uh, were judging these cars on was efficiency. Now, even though Volkswagen's EPA estimates don't sound as impressive as other cars on the market, Volkswagen tends to use their EPA estimates that are very achievable. And in fact, when Motor Trend did their testing, they found that the actual real world efficiency in using this car was more in line, it was better than the other cars. Even though other cars say they get better fuel economy, this car actually in real world usage gets better fuel economy Volkswagen just likes to be very conservative. Germans, they like to be very conservative about what they put out there about your achievable uh, EPA estimates. The other thing that the Motor Trend people said was that it is a, a very big, it's a big car. It hauls a lot of people, it hauls a lot of gear, but it drives more fun, more, they actually used the word it, scintillatingly. They said that it drives more scintillatingly than it looks. The new Passat is actually a really significant value in a vehicle also. One thing that Volkswagen wanted to make sure was that it was affordable. That's why they spent to build a plant in Chattanooga. That insulates this new car, which is built for the American consumer, against fluctuations in the value of the euro compared to the, the dollar. Also, compared to the 2010 model of the Passat, you can get a fully loaded V6 SEL Premium, which is the top of the line, the most expensive Passat you can get, for about the price of the entry level 2010 model, because the 2010 model built in Germany, uh, Euro fluctuations, all that kind of stuff was, made it a significantly more difficult to bring it in at a good price point. Another thing that was noted by J.D. Power just recently is the cost of ownership of this car, uh, trips to the dealership, repairs, that kind of stuff, are not significantly more than Japanese cars. In fact, it scored the same as Infiniti and, oh no, less than Infiniti, same as Honda, same as Toyota. So the old myth about a German car being more expensive to operate is actually just a moot point. The value of this car, uh, driving it on the American roads, is really amazing. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been informative. I've enjoyed showing you the all-new 2012 Passat. I really love this car. If you have any questions, I want you to contact me. My name is Richard McAllister. I'm at Capistrano Volkswagen. My email address is rmcallister at capovw.com. You can also call me my direct line is 949-234-4220. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.